Anulom Vilom, mental. Anulom Vilom is also called as alternate nostril breathing because we are alternatively breathing from the nostrils. Okay. <clears throat> in this, what we do is we will not be using our thumb and index finger like we normally do in alternate nostril breathing. We shall try to do it mentally. So we will inhale from, let's say, the left nostril, exhale from the right, then inhale from the right, exhale from the left, inhale from the left, and continue. Now, you know, you cannot do this perfectly well, but you can make it so that the air is going from your left nostril, from the outer walls, from the inside, but outside of outside. Okay, and when you exhale, it's coming from like kind of curved like that, okay? So let's uh, try to do this. There's no way you're gonna tell I'm doing it, but let's just uh, do it a few times. And when you exhale, slowly release. So, you know, it's uh, one might ask, how do I do this? So it's just like this, you know, some people, you can uh, focus on the muscle in your ear and you can lift the ear. You can focus on the muscle of your eye and lift one eyebrow, right? Same way you can focus on the muscles of your nose and basically inhale from that nostril. Focus on the muscles of your right nostril and exhale from there. Focus on the muscles of the right nostril and inhale from there. And with practice, you'll be able to do Anulom Vilom mentally. And Anulom Vilom is a very beneficial breathing exercise because it helps to focus and balance our mind. When the mind is well balanced, it relaxes our body and the body heals when it is relaxed. Mixture of flows, downward dog. Let's go into Bhujangasana. Bend your elbows, inhale into cobra, the legs do not touch the floor. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, cobra, exhale, downward dog. Once more. Go back into downward dog, stay in downward dog, raise your right leg, bring the right knee to the right elbow. Inhale up, exhale, right knee to the left elbow. Do this two more times. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And going up, now coming into Pigeon, bring your right leg on the floor and slowly extend your arms forward, lean forward and relax with the forehead on the floor. Breathe in, breathe out. Stay here for five Ujjayis. Enjoy the stretch in the leg muscles, lower back. Breathe in, breathe out. Walk your hands back, raise your torso, go back into downward dog. Let's do three downward dog to cobra flows. Inhale Bhujangasana, exhale downward dog. Inhale Bhujangasana, exhale downward dog. Once more. And now let's raise the left leg nice and high. Left knee to the left elbow. Inhale up, exhale left knee to the right elbow. Inhale up. Two more times. Inhale, exhale. Raise the leg, go into pigeon. Bring your left leg on the floor, thighs in line with the edge of the mat. Leaning your body forward, coming, bringing the forehead on the floor. Stay here for five ujjayis. Inhale and exhale, making the ocean wave sound. Raise your head, walk your hands back. Let's go back into downward dog. And let's get ready to do three more downward dog to cobra flows. Bend the elbows, inhale into cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. One last time. Exhale, and then bend your knees. Spread your knees wide apart. 
and slide your body into child pose completely relax maintain this for five to ten breaths take deep breaths the heart rate has increased in this exercise by taking deep breaths you can calm yourself down setu band asana setu means bridge in sanskrit banda means to hold or tighten one should avoid this posture in case of severe neck or back pain begin by lying flat on the mat bend both the knees Raise the hip area and place your elbows on the floor and hands underneath the waist. Now while keeping the hips raised, try to straighten the legs. Rest the shoulders and the head on the ground. Remain in this position for 10 to 12, 20 breaths. This posture strengthens our spine, leg muscles. It also stretches the abdominal organs. Breathe in, breathe out. Observe as you inhale, the lungs fill up, belly rises, ribcage expands slightly. As you exhale, the lungs empty, belly goes in, and the ribcage contracts back. This posture also increases the blood circulation in the upper body. We are energizing our thyroid gland in this posture. Okay, now to release, gently bring the hips back on the floor and the legs. Slowly stretch your arms. Let go of all your weight onto the floor and completely relax. Cross-legged spinal stretch. Let's start by lying down on the floor. Now bend both the knees and place them on the floor. Interlace your fingers and place them underneath the head. Gently place your right leg on top of the left leg and there should not be any gap in between the legs. Move your knees to the left and turn your head to the right. Maintain this position for 10 breaths. You may close your eyes and enjoy the twist in the spine. Enjoy the stretch in your neck, shoulder and back muscles. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly lift your knees back, bring the legs back to the center. Now let's flip our legs. Take the left leg on top of the right. Make sure there is no gap in between the legs. Now slowly move your knees to the right. Look to the left and enjoy the twist in the spine. Maintain this for 10 breaths. Observe as you inhale, the lungs fill up, belly rises, ribcage expands slightly. As you exhale, belly goes in, ribcage contracts back. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly bring your knees back to the center. Stretch your legs out. Bring your arms back on the mat. Let go of all your weight onto the floor and completely relax. Baby Bhujangasan. Bhujanga means snake or serpent in Sanskrit. Baby Cobra is an easy version of the Cobra pose. To enter the posture, lay on your belly on the mat. Place your chin on the floor and palms on the mat with the thumbs by the nipples. Keep your legs together so the thighs and lower legs touch. As you inhale, raise the upper body off the mat. There should be no weight on the hands. Keep your shoulders back and the chest open with the elbows tucked in. Raise your head such that the base of your head is touching the neck. If you have neck or cervical spinal injury, simply look straight. Enjoy the arch in the upper and middle back. Stay here for 10 to 20 breaths. This pose strengthens the upper back, shoulders and neck muscles. Energizes the heart and the thymus gland. Opens up the chest and lungs. 
Be aware of your breathing. To release, slowly lower your upper body to the floor. Turn your head to one side and completely relax. Salabhasan. Salab means locust or grasshopper in Sanskrit. Let's start by lying on the mat with the chin on the mat. Make gentle fists of your hands. Take the thumb in and roll the fingers on top. These are called yoga fists. Now place your fists underneath the groin region for support. Make sure the fists are not touching each other. They're apart. If you keep them together, you might hurt yourself. Okay, now keep the left leg relaxed. Let's straighten the right leg and raise it by 45 degrees. Maintain this for about 10 breaths. Be aware of the stretch in your lower back and the leg muscles. Now slowly release and relax that leg. Stretch the left leg and raise it by 45 degrees. Maintain this for 10 breaths. Once again, be aware of the stretch in the lower back, your leg muscles and your breathing. Remember to breathe. Face is relaxed, upper body is completely relaxed. Now slowly release the left leg. Release your hands. Turn your head to the other side and completely relax. Matsindrasana variation. Begin by sitting in Dandasana or staff pose. We shall now do Matsendrasana or spinal twist, which originates from the Sanskrit word Matsendra, meaning king of the fish. Gently bend the right knee and place the right foot around the outer side of the left knee. The right foot should be flat on the floor. Slide your left foot and bring it close to the right hip. Make sure your right knee is vertical and the belly button is in line with the knees. Raise your arms and twist your body to the right. Bend the left elbow and slide your lower left arm underneath the knee. Bring your right arm around your body from the back. Try and hold both hands. You may want to use a towel if you are unable to grasp both hands. Make sure your hips remain on the mat. On your exhalations, try to twist a little more. You may close your eyes and enjoy your diaphragmatic breathing. Be aware of the twist in the spine. In this position, we are strengthening our back muscles, lateral abdominal muscles, neck and shoulder muscles. Breathe in, breathe out. And now let's release and let's go to the other side. Place the left foot outside the right knee. Slide the right foot close to the left hip. Raise the arms. And once again, try to hold both your hands. You may use a towel if you wish to connect the hands. Maintain this for 10 to 20 breaths or within your capacity. This is a very powerful position. In this posture, we are energizing our adrenal glands, pancreas, kidneys, spleen, liver, energizing our reproductive organs, compressing the digestive organs. Breathe in, breathe out. Eyes are closed, faces relaxed. Enjoy the twist in the spine. Now 
Now slowly release. Release your arms, legs, stretch your legs out, flex your legs. And relax in Dandasana. Malasana, garland pose walk. Avoid malasana or garland pose if you have had knee surgery or are experiencing severe knee pain. Sit in a squatting position with your feet wide apart. Try to bring your heels on the floor. If it is difficult, just keep them raised. Make a namaste with your hands and now walk. Do this for about a minute or ask for your capacity. In this posture, we are compressing and energizing our digestive organs, strengthening the leg muscles and strengthening our knee joints. Slowly walk back to your mat. Come back to the starting position. Release your arms, legs and come into seated positions. If you like, you can even stretch your legs out and sit in Dandasana and relax. Vibhrit means opposite in Sanskrit. This is the inverted pose. Please avoid this posture if you have high blood pressure, glaucoma, or are menstruating. Let's begin by first stretching both the legs. Gently raise the legs through 45 degrees, 90, and then extend the feet beyond the head until the legs are parallel to the floor. Support your hips with your hands. The elbows should be shoulder width apart. Raise the legs vertically in the air. Make sure that you maintain about a 45 degree angle between the legs and your torso. So bring your legs slightly lower. Because if you keep your legs perpendicular to the floor, there is excessive weight on the elbows. Maintain this for 30 to 60 breaths. This posture increases blood circulation in the upper body. Release varicose veins, energizes the thyroid and parathyroid glands, releases pressure in the groin and lower abdominal region, keeps the uterus in a healthy condition, and prevents displacement of abdominal organs and hernia, improves functions of the gonad and the adrenal glands, adds glow to the face, and clears out facial acne and pimples. Release slowly, take the legs over the head parallel to the floor. With full control, gently bring the hips on the floor and release the legs. Straighten your, straighten your legs out and relax. We should now do two counter poses. One is the half fish. Slowly place your hands underneath your hips or the sacred region using your elbows. Bring the top of the head on the floor, floor and uncurl the neck. Stay here for about five breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly release. Release your arms, relax. And we shall do the threading the needle. Bend one knee, place the other foot. Take the arm in between and hold on to the outside of the knee. Bring the knee close to the floor. When you do Vibrit Karni, what happens is there's an arch in the middle back that's formed. And when you do this complementary posture, you're trying to flatten that part of the back. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly release. Let's go to the other side. Squeeze the knees close to the chest. Enjoy the stretch of the outer pads. Be aware of the flattening of your middle back. Breathe in, breathe out. And now slowly release, stretch your legs out. And finally you can do the neck out stretch, lying down. So inhale, turn your head to one side. Exhale, bring the head back to the center. Inhale, turn your head to the other side. Exhale to the center. Do this a couple more times. And slowly come back to the center position. And 
Shavasana. Let's begin by lying on the floor. Feet are 10 to 18 inches apart. Palms facing the sky, fingers gently curled. Find a comfortable position for your head. Let's begin this mental relaxation, starting with the legs. Relax the feet, the lower legs, knee joints, thighs. Relax your hip joints, pelvis, abdominal muscles, chest muscles. Relax the shoulders and relax each and every vertebrae of yours. Relax the buttocks. Let's bring our awareness to the arms and send a wave of relaxation through all the muscles in both your arms. Relax your neck muscles, facial muscles, your eyes, eyelids, eyebrows. Bring your awareness to the head and relax the entire skull region. And observe your breathing, the smooth and steady breathing. If there is any part in your body that needs that extra relaxation, you may relax it now. Otherwise, stay focused on your breathing. To release, slowly wriggle your fingers and your toes. Gently turn on to your left side or your right side. Place your hand underneath the head, making a pillow out of it, and slowly come into a sitting position. Let's rub our palms, make them nice and warm. Place them on the eyes. Let the warmth flow from the palms to the eyes. Release the hands. Place them on the knees. Open your eyes.